Um, all right, so I'm Rachel and I'm a product designer for now. Um, and I wanted to take today to talk about some of the different things that I tried before product design and what product design means to me, which is for people. Um, all right, so I grew up in a small town upstate New York called Fredonia. And the first thing you probably notice about that town when you go there is that there's a lot of really old signs there. And the second thing you probably notice is that they all seem like they actually belong there. They're kind of infinite and eternal, and I really like that about Fredonia is that it seems like they should always be there. Um, and this is the state website of Idaho, and I know that um, because <laughs> when I was in design school, I took this screenshot because I had to, as my first project, redesign Idaho state website. Um, so like a good design school student, I went to uh, Font Squirrel and iStock Photo and downloaded a bunch of stuff and put together this sort of uninspired um, bit of stock photography on the left here. And um, our professor took one look at that and said, you know, put your heart in it or don't do it at all. <laughs> so um, I went back, scrapped everything, and put together this second thing, which feels a little bit more like Idaho. At least it's got to go with the gun in the corner, so. <laughs> feels right to me. All right. Um, so my first job out of college was uh, at an advertising agency called Barbarian. Um, and this is the first project that I watched, watched launch when I was there. And it was a um, website where you could put your tweets on wrapping paper and print it out. And the internet went crazy for it. They just love this stuff. Um, and meanwhile, I was working on a lot of pitches that were sort of uninspired and uninteresting. Um, this is one of the ones I'm a little bit more proud of. It's a solar-powered carousel. And there's still, if you look on Instagram, a bunch of pictures of this thing, because it resonated with people. Um, and while I was there, I kind of noticed the difference between the things that were really good that we did and the things that were just sort of okay that we did was that there's something interesting about it. One really small thing that resonates with a lot of people that we just focused on and played with. Um, and the less interesting things that we did... <laughs> just tried to focus on way too many things. And this is a bunch of photos of women laughing into salad. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like a classic example of people not really understanding um, what they're trying to do with the product, with the project, and saying, you know, um, let's make something for mothers between 25 and 45. <laughs> All right. Um, so I left advertising and started working at this app called Time Hop, which essentially tells you the things that you did on this day in history or posted on social media. Um, and when I was there, we sort of had this feeling that sharing wasn't really good enough. A lot of people said time up was kind of solitary and boring, so we were like, all right, let's make a sharing feature. And our process for making that sharing feature was basically we'd design it, we'd user test it, not public test it, we'd design it again, make it better, refine it, develop it, fix bugs, six months later, submit it to the app store and have a beer and everything was going to be great. <laughs> um, but we, what we ended up finding was that a bunch of people use this feature and tried it out and then it sort of declined and our new signups really didn't do anything. And we were like, all right, well, that's sort of strange. Let's get some people in here and see if maybe there's like some bug with iPhone or something that is on old phones that we can't test. So we had people in and we were like, all right, show us sharing. And what they did was take a screenshot <laughs> um, and not use our sharing feature at all. And so we thought, well, that's kind of strange. I wonder how many people do that. We put some tracking in and found that people were taking screenshots many, many, many times a minute. In fact, like four or five, six times more than using our feature. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> um, and I feel like the problem there was that we were actually really out of touch with all the people that are up on their app every day. We kind of didn't know much about them, and we, we actually didn't know they even knew how to screenshot. So, <laughs> um, a lot of people say fail faster, but I think that probably we just would have failed. If we decided to fail faster, we would have failed ten times in the time that it took us to launch that feature and not really learned anything because we still wouldn't be talking to people. So what we did instead was, it's a little hard to see, but we took our Fridays and had people stop by the office. We went to Starbucks and gave them $5 to like demo our app. And we started just taking every Friday to talk to people in real life. And I think that that's really important. It started helping us to make much better features much faster. So now I work at Etsy. It's a marketplace where you can find a lot of stuff from vintage tables to brass deer to like a stuffed version of your colon larger than life. Which is <laughs> kind of a crazy, crazy place to work. <laughs> and um, behind each of those items are millions of sellers who 
count on us to sell their work and do good things for them every day. And so the, the question I have then is like, how do we make sure that we're doing that? <laughs> what if we fail them? Um, and the ways that we do that are, are pretty elaborate. So um, this is my email, and I have an alert set up for every time somebody mentions a feature that I work um, that I work on on the forums. And we do a lot of stuff like that at Etsy. We sort of um, keep track of what people are saying on the forums. We go to visit sellers in their studios, and a lot of our projects come from those interactions that we have with real people. <laughs> and I think that makes us a lot more accurate, but there's always that chance that sometimes <laughs> we'll set everything out up and it still fails. <laughs> so what do you do about that? <laughs> you still have to ex expect failure. And so we try to scope our projects to be a lot shorter and a lot smaller and make sure that every time we assume something, we're right. So this little picture on the top is um, one small project that validates an assumption, one that says that actually we thought the wrong thing. And so we redirect and try other things, and that just keeps us moving in the right direction and doing the right things for the people that use our product. And I guess that's it. <laughs> so.